Hello, Pilgrim Jim here with another quote and a little meditation upon it. This is kind of deep. It's about freedom. And if you like it, please do click the like button below the video. But particularly, I'd love it if you would comment so I can hear what your thoughts are about what we're going to read today. As I said, the quote is about freedom. And I think bondage is like an onion. It has just so many layers. African Americans and other peoples of color today are struggling for social, political, economic freedom. Yeah. The question of freedom also goes to levels of emotional, psychological, and spiritual bondage. And it's sad to see people throw away opportunities for freedom on a daily basis. I see people reaching out to grasp whatever appears to offer them pleasure or escape or comfort or flattery, security, predictability, status. I could go on. I've asked myself many times, how much freedom do I really want? For example, what if in a certain situation, I could act freely only if I was willing to be uncomfortable. Would I care more about freedom than the comfort to which I'm addicted? What if I could act freely only by accepting suffering? What if freedom meant facing truths that I've been running away from or hiding from myself? What if freedom meant facing up to my fears, you know, in order to step up to my full potential? What if it meant facing the displeasure of those whose opinion is very important to me? Gosh, what if it meant being canceled on social media? Well, today's quote is from Dostoevsky, one of my favorite novels of all time, The Brothers Karamazov. And in particular, I'm going to read from the very famous portion of the novel known as the Grand Inquisitor, which is actually a kind of story within the story. It's a play written by one of the characters. He's reading it to his brother. And it's set in Spain during the Inquisition. And Jesus has just returned to earth a second time. And he's wandering around doing his thing, healing people and so on. But the Grand Inquisitor resents it because he sees himself and his cohorts as the true guardians and benefactors of the mass of humanity, who, in his opinion, are utterly incapable of rising to the kind of freedom that Jesus expected of people. In fact, he goes so far as to accuse Jesus of not really loving people at all. Because if he really loved people, he'd be more concerned to give them what they really need and want, security, stomachs full of bread, the chance to be part of a glorious institution so they can enjoy a ready-made sense of identity and don't have to look within themselves too deeply. In the quote I'm going to read, the Inquisitor is commenting on the first of three temptations that Jesus experienced when he fasted for 40 days and nights in the wilderness right before he started his public ministry. And the first temptation was the temptation to, to turn stones into bread. Obviously very tempting for someone who'd been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. <laughs> and the Grand Inquisitor thinks Jesus got it all wrong. He really should have turned the stones into bread after all. This is the Grand Inquisitor speaking to Jesus. You want to go into the world and you're going empty handed <laughs> with some promise of freedom, which they in their simplicity and innate lawlessness cannot even comprehend, which they dread and fear. For nothing has ever been more insufferable for humans and for human society than freedom. But do you see these stones in this bare scorching desert, turn them into bread? and mankind will run after you like sheep, grateful and obedient, though eternally trembling, lest you withdraw your hand and your loaves cease for them. <laughs> a 
but you did not want to deprive people of freedom, and so you rejected the offer, the temptation. For what sort of freedom is it, you reasoned, if obedience is bought with loaves of bread? You objected that man does not live by bread alone. But do you know that in the name of this very earthly bread, the spirit of the earth will rise against you and fight with you and defeat you, and everyone will follow him, exclaiming, Who can compare to this beast? For he has given us fire from heaven. And there he quotes the book of Revelation, where it's speaking about the Antichrist. And so, as you can see, the Grand Inquisitor doesn't think very much of humanity, he's very paternalistic, and is full of disdain for what he perceives to be the weakness of human beings who, are, who cannot rise to the level of the kind of existential freedom that Jesus wants to set people free for. Okay. Well, our culture is stuffed full with entertainments that keep us diverted. Drugs that numb us, ideologies that offer us the seductive feeling of belonging and being in the right. And in my life, I've had to struggle, you know, for freedom in all those areas. And I've, I'm always finding new levels of the onion, new ways in which I am bound and limited and uh, maybe was in denial about or just didn't even realize. The more conscious I become, the more seems to be revealed. But always for me, the first act of freedom is the recognition and the acknowledgement of my unfreedom. Even if I never move past that, there's at least a sort of dignity and achievement in the clear-eyed acknowledgement that I am stifling myself, either by trying to change things that I should accept or by tolerating the chains that bind me because they give me some kind of bread. And so the question then becomes, am I willing to live by bread alone?